of the Elo and Stitch podcast. I'm your host, Kristen, and I'm here to talk to you about what else? Knitting. I will also be talking about things that are knitting related and knitting adjacent and maybe not so knitting adjacent. So if you don't know me already, my name is Kristen Janik. I'm a semi-retired knitting pattern designer, a knitting instructor, and an all-around knitting enthusiast. I am podcasting to you from the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C., where I live with my husband and two little boys, JJ, who is eight, and Ollie, who is seven now. When I'm not knitting, I also enjoy uh, yoga, Orioles baseball, drinking wine, but it is mostly about the knitting, so let's go ahead and start talking about it. Okay, I have a kind of a pattern drop for you today in that I have finished my newly redone Going Steady cardigan. So this is a pattern I published several years ago, uh, and I recently regraded it to include sizes up to 6X. And I also uh, knit a new sample in new yarn because the original yarn was discontinued. Uh, so let me go ahead and pop a couple of photos in here. All right, so this new sample is knit in Knit Picks Simply Wool Worsted, mostly. That's a 100% eco wool. And then these pops of purple are Magpie Fibers Nest Worsted in Twilight Rose. So I was really going for kind of a neutral, go with everything sweater here. And I think the color choices worked really well. Grays, you know, definitely go with everything. And then you just get these pops of a very subtle purple that are going to kick it up a notch. So Going Steady was inspired by the sort of 50s era Letterman's cardigan, usually, you know, in school colors um, with some stripes on the sleeves. And so I've kind of taken that up a notch. The sleeves are worked in reverse stockinette rather than stockinette, which gives you these little, little blips at the edges of the big color block stripes which I find very charming. Uh, I've added a big, cozy shawl collar. So nice and deep and folds over um, down to the V-neck in the front. And then of course, pockets because everything should have pockets. <laughs> uh, so as I said, this is now um, graded up to a size 6X. Um, it is intended to be worn with four or more inches of positive ease. So in the photos that I showed you, I'm wearing the size medium with about five and a half inches of positive ease at the bust. So the upgraded pattern is now available in both my Ravelry and Pay Hip shops. And uh, we have a sweater along coming up. Uh, I will talk, be talking about that a little bit more a little bit later. Uh, but that is going to be kicking off on August 9th. And Prior to that, all of my sweater patterns are buy one, get one free on Ravelry, including Going Steady. So you just pick two of the eligible sweater patterns. There are 27 included in the sweater along. Um, you can visit mediapitawana.com slash sweater along 2021 uh, to see all of the details about the event and the patterns that are included. You can add two of those patterns to your Ravelry cart and you add to the code SAL2021, S-A-L-2021, and there, buy one, get one free. If you prefer to shop on Payhip, um, Payhip does not support buy one, get one coupon codes at this time, but you can just get in touch with me directly. Let me know which two sweater patterns you're interested in, and I can send you a custom discount code so that you can get the same deal without having to go on to Ravelry. So I'm really excited to have this sweater done, uh, the original, as I said, I knit a few years ago um, in a yarn that is now discontinued. And at the time, the um, dyer of that yarn picked the colors um, and they were not really my style. So I'm very happy to have this in my wardrobe, a nice neutral that is gonna go with everything. Cozy grandpa cardigan, just you know, great for wearing around the house, dashing out you know, for errands when it's cooler, it is currently 88 degrees, so I'm definitely not wearing it today or anytime soon, but cool weather will be here eventually, and this is going to be just a great staple to have in my wardrobe. 
So uh, I will include a direct link to the pattern on Ravelry and Payhip in the description box down below. So you can check it out if you are interested. Um, the revised pattern has been tested and tech edited, so I am quite confident that it is good shape, in good shape. <laughs> um, and I hope you'll consider uh, purchasing the pattern and participating in the sweater along. On and off the needles, uh, the big thing I have off the needles is obviously uh, the new cardigan. I do have something else almost off the needles. So the last time I podcasted, I had just started this. I had literally just cast on and now it is almost done. So this is the test knit that I am working on for Taylor Owen of the um, Thread to Mend podcast. And it is just this beautiful cabled bralette. So I say I'm almost done. I am working on the straps and trying to decide how long I want them to be. I think, um, you know, the pattern, I think it just says, you know, attach the straps <laughs> to the back <laughs> of your bralette. Um, and I think what I want to do is to um, crisscross them on the back. I think, um, so the way she had originally written this pattern, I believe was just one cup size because it is kind of in a, um, a rib. So it stretches quite a bit. Uh, in some of the revisions, she has um, added some larger cup sizes. Um, so, you know, kind of in the category of more information than you really need to know. Um, I am a C cup, a small C cup, and I think this is probably, the, the, the way this is originally written, that original cup size is probably, I'm about the largest that's going to fit in that. So I think if I crisscross the straps, it's gonna give me just a little bit more support. Um, the pattern includes, I'm so well prepared. All right, so the, the original pattern um, includes seven sizes, and that is basically the size of the, like the bra band that goes around your rib cage. Uh, so I am knitting the size two, and that is just about perfect for me. Um, and as I said, I don't think that the original smaller cup size would fit any larger than a, a small C. Uh, but I'm really happy with it. And I do wish kind of that I had knit the band a little bit longer. It is very flexible, um, so it stretches. But of course, as it, the more you have to stretch it, the more it shrinks lengthwise. And I wouldn't mind it to be a little bit longer there for me. I have a wide rib cage uh, for my size. Presumably that's probably why um, I, I would have preferred that just a little bit longer but I think it'll fit just fine. So I'm gonna do a close up of some of this cable detail. I'm knitting this in Magpie Fiber Swanky DK, which is the um, what's called for in the pattern. And I looked it up and this colorway is called Voices Carry. Um, and it is a very soft and comfortable to wear right against the skin, really cute cable detail right here at the top of the cup as well. Um, the pattern uses a few um, just style, writing style choices that are maybe, um, that are fine, but maybe not as conventional. Um, so for example, I am used to reading, um, it'll see, you know, something knit to, purl to, parentheses around that to the end. And in this case, it just says knit two, purl two with the parentheses. It doesn't say to the end. It's pretty obvious when you're doing it that that's what it means. And I, it does say so in the like abbreviations. It says anything print between parentheses you should repeat. So um, I'm just used to seeing to the end. Um, so it's really tricky to figure out exactly how long to get these straps. I pseudo tried this on yesterday. The straps do need to be longer than they are, especially if I want to crisscross them. Um, now I had, because I wanted to put
put the one strap on hold and do the opposite cuff and strap, um, I just put this on a stitch, well, this is a locking stitch marker, but a stitch holder and wound off some more yarn to make it a little bit longer so that I would not have to cut the yarn, do the opposite side, reattach it, um, but I'm actually not sure if I wound off enough yarn, so I may have to add it again. Um, I am leaving for the beach on the day that this episode is going to go live, and I'm really hoping to have this done by then. Today is Wednesday. That gives me um, all the rest of today and all day tomorrow to, uh, to finish this up and figure out how long these straps need to be. So that is completely reasonable, and I hope I am able to get it done. Um, but again, also, you know, we're packing for the beach and and things like that. So I, and I need to make a lasagna to freeze and bring to the beach. Um, so almost, almost done. Really close. Really happy with the project. Um, I know testers are still working on it. I think it's going to be um, at least a few more weeks until this goes live. But I have been very happy with the pattern. Great combination with the yarn. Love it. I think it's... Um, once I think that Taylor has um, worked out all the math for some larger cup sizes, I think it's going to be great. It's absolutely adorable. So one project almost off the needles. <laughs> um, other than that, I still have everything that was on the needles last time still on the needles as far as I know, you know, except for this sweater. Uh, and I kind of started something new. <laughs> um, as evidenced by my frequent display of Carrie Knits patterns, I'm a big fan of her patterns. Um, and she has been kind of teasing a tank top design that she has been working on, and she opened up a call for testers, so I signed up. <laughs> um, I haven't done anything but swatch yet, and my swatch is currently drying, so I don't really have anything to show you other than the pattern itself. This is so cute. Um, I'm actually not going to knit this version. This is the cropped version. I'm going to knit the A-line uh, waist version. So that means it's gonna kind of outward from the bust. Um, and she actually doesn't have a sample of that in here. So, all right, so you can see up here, it's that cropped version. The back is so cute. This is just sort of the regular old, you know, tank top version. And then I'll be doing an A-line version that again, kind of sprints out more from the bust down to the waist. You can see both of her versions. Um, this is actually knit in one piece. So it is knit from um, the, the center back around to the center back, and then you seam it here, and you can just leave however much open that you want at the bottom. None or a lot. So uh, as I said, I'm testing the A-line version. I'm definitely gonna knit this cropped version too. This is so cute. Uh, this is knit in fingering weight yarn. Uh, it is knit on rather small needles, although uh, my swatch is drying, um, it looks a little small. So the pattern is knit on, or the recommended needle size in the pattern is US 3. I have not measured it yet. You should always wait until your swatch is dry to measure. Um, but it looks a little small and I suspect I'm going to go up to a 4. So swatching is done. I am planning to bring this to the beach uh, to knit. It is a 6 hour drive. Um, and I'm driving with my dad, so my whole family goes, um, not my whole family, but the four of us, my dad and my sister go, um, I'm driving with my dad partially because we don't, because we now have a dog, we don't all fit in our car, um, but partially because my dad is, um, 74, almost 74, and I don't want him driving six hours by himself. Um, so I'm going to be driving with my dad and I think Ollie. The kids are still arguing over who's going where. Um, and I don't know if he's gonna let me drive his car. He has a new car, it is super fancy. I mean, it's not like a Mercedes or anything, it's just that it's very high tech. So, you know, it's got the built-in GPS and it connects to your phone so you can listen to Pandora and it's, you know, all these warnings if you get out of your lane or it tells you when it's safe to switch lanes and. It warns you if you're, you know, gonna hit something. <laughs> it's very fancy, um, but he's a little precious about it, um, which is fair because um, we always had crap cars. 
we were when I was growing up. Um, and now, you know, he is older and able to <laughs> uh, afford a, a nice car, but he is a little precious about it. So I don't know if he's actually gonna let me drive it or not. Um, if not, I get six hours of knitting time. So we'll see. I am I am planning all of my, my beach uh, projects that, that I'm gonna take with me. Of course, like everybody, I always think I'm going to knit way more than I'm actually going to when we're on vacation, but we shall see how it goes. Um, so that testament is definitely going to come with me, and um, I think I'll bring this project with me. So as I said, I think last time, um, I've already used more than half my yarn from my Ridge Beauty, and I don't really know what I want to do now with this because I really just don't want to buy new yarn. Um, so I'm finishing up the back. It's... Um, I'm onto the short row shaping of the shoulders. I would like to get that finished again <laughs> before we leave. Um, and then I'm not sure if I'm going to bring, bring it with me or not, but I might. Um, the only change I have, well, I have made a couple of changes so far. So I mentioned already that I used an alternating cable cast on, which looks really nice, but, um, means I had to make some alterations to the Knit One Purl One pattern. And now I am substituting in German short rows for wrap and turn short rows. It's a really easy substitution to make um, and they just look so much better. And I don't, I mean, some people, their wrap and turn short rows look great. Um, mine don't, <laughs> no matter how neatly I try to do it. So I am substituting um, those short rows and hopefully gonna just I only have you know a few more rows on each shoulder to do hopefully going to finish this up before we go and then still need to figure out how on earth i am going to hack the front side of this so that i don't have to buy another bowl of yarn i guess i might the thing is it's not like i don't think it's like a super popular yarn so i don't know how much luck i would have but maybe i might go on Ravelry and see if anybody is selling, you know, maybe just a partial. I mean, I don't, I need probably maybe half. And if not, I, I do think what I'm going to do is take out some of this garter stitch in the v-neck here. I don't love that idea, but I still think it's, it's <laughs> better than buying a whole other bubble yarn. So we'll see if that's going to come to the beach or not. Uh, I'm about to get started on what I think is probably my last, as I said, I'm semi-retired. So I have um, published a couple of uh, pattern updates this year. Um, and I am actually planning to publish a new sweater pattern in the fall. I showed you guys uh, the yarn before and I am definitely planning to take that with me to the beach and get started on that. Um, that sweater pattern is going to be a free pattern for everybody who participates in the sweater along and actually finishes a sweater during the sweater along. Um, so at some point I will be doing a call for test knitters. If you're participating in the sweater along, you might not want to test knit that because <laughs> there's going to be an overlap there. Um, but I have not even cast on yet. I have started some math, but I have not cast on yet. Um, other than that, I still have this sad sock that is going nowhere fast, but I have started the heel. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's something. I've got the heel going. Um, I love this. I really do. I really love this pattern. It's just not a quick knit, unfortunately. And, uh, that's about it. We're on and off the needles in this episode. All right, I haven't done a stash flash in a while, but I actually do have some stash flash for you. So the first is the yarn that I bought for the test knit that I am going to do for Carrie Knits. So this is um, a collaboration yarn between um, La Bien Amy and Rosa Pomar, which is a Portuguese yarn company. Um, so this is a, I think, 
I don't know it exactly what the deal is with the collaboration. I don't know what the details are. I don't know if they, they both, di I don't, I don't know. Did one of them die it and the other one did, I don't know how yarn collaborations work, but that's what it is. Um, so this is 100% Portuguese wool and the colorway is called quail. And unfortunately, I seem to have lost the light. Um, so this is not coming through all that well. And I noticed I bought three skeins. I think I'm only going to need two, but I didn't want to run out, especially since it's a test knit. So I bought three skeins and I wound up two. And they're not the same color. <laughs> I mean, they're very close, but this one is distinctly darker. Um, so they're both sort of a, a gray with little bits of brown, but definitely this one is a darker gray. Um, I could wind up the third skein and see which two are the closest match, but I actually think what I'm going to do is to, the sweater is worked from, sweater, tank top is worked from the bottom up, so I think I'm going to start with a slightly darker color at the bottom and just kind of uh, be like a little bit of a gradient up to the lighter color at the top. But um, the yarn is definitely a bit rustic. It's got a little bit of a halo and it is definitely not super soft, but I am okay with that. I haven't really checked the swatch. I'm interested to see if it's going to soften up a little bit, um, but even if it doesn't, I think that's going to be fine. Um, I purchased these at an actual local yarn shop. So this past weekend was the, um, was a brunch for the National Capital Area Translators Association, which is a um, trade association for translators in the, in the and interpreters in the Washington, D.C. area. It's a part of the larger American Translators Association, of which I am also a member. Um, so the uh, Encada decided to do an actual live in-person networking brunch this past weekend. Uh, and I forced myself to go um, because I am well, not used to talking to other human beings and it's something I need to get back into practice with. Um, I need to start making some connections within the translation industry. Um, and it was free. And I told myself that if I went and did the scary networking thing, then afterward I could go to Loot uh, in DC, DC's local yarn store and do the fun yarn shopping thing. And that is what I did. So. I got three skeins of this. I also grabbed a skein of this. This is not uh, my usual color. This is uh, uh, Biche Bouche Le Gros Lamb's Wool, which is just the, um, I've used Le Petit Lamb's Wool before for the Six Crooked Highway sweater pattern. This is the kind of worsted, oh, it's really getting blown out, worsted weight version of, there we go, that. And it is just a, a very pale pink, and it even is called very light pink. <laughs> um, this is not my normal color, but my son told me he wanted me to knit him a pink hat. Pink is his favorite color. Um, and because pink is not really my color, I don't really have any in my stash. So I saw this. It is just this, it's really getting blown out. So I don't know if you guys are going to know. There we go. You can see it's kind of a little bit speckled. Uh, speaking of my son, there he is screaming. Uh, it's a little bit speckled, just um, little dots of pink, darker pink and light pink throughout. So it's a really um, a subtle pink. Um, and it's a nice, hefty yarn. So this has, again, this is uh, worsted weight, I believe. Um, yeah, maybe a light worsted. And this is 210 yards, plenty for a hat for a seven-year-old, uh, maybe even two hats. And then I picked up a couple of other things while I was at Loop. First, I got some new flare. So if you can see this, so this is from Shelly Can. Um, it's just really cute. So nice to kind of, I don't know, you know, years from now i'm still gonna have this and maybe my grandkids are gonna find it and be like what god's name is this so i thought it was really adorable get vaccinated 
and then I picked up a, a copy of Pom Pom. Uh, this is the it's summer, 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 2021. I usually hardly ever like the summer issues of magazines. I don't really like a lot of, um, I just don't generally speaking like lit knitting with, with cotton and, and linen. Um, I don't know. It's fine, but it just it doesn't have that same kind of cozy knitting fall vibe. But I saw a, a bunch of photos from this on um, Instagram, and I just love some of this stuff. So this really cute tank top. And then there's this other really cute tank top. There you go. There, and oh, I know there's a, a sweater in here that I love. And yeah, it's not, that's cute. I probably wouldn't wear it, but uh, it's not usually my style, but um, I don't know. It was really working for me, so got a copy of that as well. So for the first time in well over a year, I got to go to a real live local yarn shop and buy some things. So if you are in the DC area, definitely you can check out Looped. It is in DuPont Circle. It is, I don't know, a couple of blocks from the Metro. It is, it is on the second floor and it's like, there's like three different doors there and you gotta figure out which, <laughs> which one is the one that leads up to Looped. Um, but really cute, lots of yarn, definitely check it out. All right, I am gonna talk about sewing for just a couple of minutes. So if you are not interested in sewing, please continue on to the next segment. Um, so first I finished the dress that I showed you in the last podcast episode. So I will go ahead and pop a couple of photos in here. Uh, I'm very happy with it. It is absolutely, definitely not perfect. There are definitely some mistakes. Um, it's my very first garment that I've ever sewn. So it's just, I'm not expecting it to be perfect, but it is wearable. As you can see, it fits. It has pockets. Everybody loves pockets. Um, so I'm very happy with it. I have not worn it anywhere yet. As I said, it's, I'm kind of planning for it to be my kind of yarn event, fiber festival dress, teaching dress, if I'm teaching any knitting classes. Um, so I have not worn it yet, but I certainly intend to, despite the fact that it has its fair share of mistakes. Uh, and I have started a new project. So this pattern is called the as I make a giant mess here. This, this pattern is called the Uniform Tunic. It is a pattern by Green Line Studio. And it is a kind of, I guess, very short <laughs> dress or very long shirt, which I guess is what a tunic is. Um, so this is sort of a, a kind of a utilitarian um, garment. As you can see, it has these uh, great front pockets. I love these. They're really deep, lots of room in them. Um, and this is going to be uh, kind of a great just wear around the house and get stuff done garment. So I have, um, it is also not without mistakes. I, <laughs> the, one of the problems, not problems, but difficult things to get used to with sewing is that if you cut things wrong, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> so you will cut out the pieces of the pattern from the paper and put them on top of your fabric and then cut your fabric out, which is what I did. And it has different lines to cut on for the different sizes. And I did all of that fine, except for some reason, when I was cutting out the back of the bodice, which is this, um, I, did not cut the pattern paper on the right line. Like it has a line that says, put this line against the fold. But for some reason I cut like an inch wider than that. I think I had kind of like cut the two pieces, the back and the front apart um, and managed to cut that edge so neatly that I didn't realize that I hadn't cut on the actual line. I had cut like an inch away from it and I did not realize this until after I cut out the back. 
So, um, because um, when you're, you're cutting out these pieces, you want your sides to be symmetrical. So you're gonna fold the fabric in half and then cut out the front and the back with one edge right along that fold. So you get two symmetrical halves. Because I had all this extra fabric at that fold, I couldn't just cut inward because then I would have had a back in two pieces. Um, and I couldn't just push the pattern, you know, correctly, you know, to the right, put the fabric right against the line because it screwed up everything I cut out on the opposite side. So the armhole and so I didn't have enough fabric left to recut it. And eventually after like staring at it and growling for a few minutes, I realized that if I shortened the back by about two inches, then I would have enough fabric to recut out the whole thing from the original back that I had cut. So I did that. Then I had to recut the front. I don't think I did it precisely right, but it did work. Um, and I am short-waisted, so it being a little bit shorter is absolutely fine. I had considered shortening it originally, um, so no big deal. Um, so first you sew the front and the back together uh, and then you attach this skirt with, well, first you do the, you attach the pockets to the front and to the skirt and then you just sew everything together. So this side, you can see that, there it is, my two seams between the top and the bottom line up perfectly. But this side, not so much. You can see they're off by maybe a quarter of an inch. I could redo it. I'm not going to. <laughs> um, this has a little bit of a different style of armhole um, facing than the first garment I did. This has um, what's called a bias armhole facing. I attached it once and did a poor job. So I ripped it off and recut the armhole facings. Fortunately, I had enough fabric left and I'm going to redo that. So I still need to do the armhole facing, the um, front and back neckline, and then just seam the hem. So, so far so good. I am using a linen fabric. It is uh, a yarn dyed linen fabric. Um, it's pretty sturdy. It is very, Lots of, lots of these little ends coming off. So, um, I, for my dress project to finish uh, my seam allowances, I just used the thinking shears I inherited from my mom. But this fabric is too, I don't know what the word is because I don't speak sewing, but it's, um, it unravels too easily. So I have been doing a, uh, a zigzag stitch to finish my seam allowances. Um, so that it won't keep unraveling. Enjoying this. And then, because about half the people in this country are selfish jerks and won't get vaccinated. And if that makes you feel like I'm attacking you, I am. Um, when you start, even for vaccinated people, and you start wearing masks again, uh, indoors, crowded situations and things like that, which is not the end of the world, but I wanted to make some new ones. Um, so I ordered some fabric. I ordered some for my kids because they're going to have to wear masks in school. It hasn't arrived yet, so I can't show you, but I ordered some for me and that has arrived, so I can show you. Uh, again, if curse words are offensive to you, um, I still apologize, sorry. <laughs> they're not offensive to me, so I love this. Um, and I also got one for my sister. The lettering here isn't as clear so I don't know if you can read that as clearly but um so I am planning to make some new masks I love this fabric and so I'm definitely going to use a lot I mean the pattern that I have include for masks has you know a, a front facing and then a lining for the inside um, obviously a two-layer mask is going to be a little bit more effective um, 
So when I made masks for my husband and the kids in May, I just used the same fabric for both, but I love this fabric and I don't want to waste it on the inside of the mask that no one's gonna see. So I think I'm gonna use some of my other fabrics that I have around for, um, for the lining so I can get the most use out of this possible. I love this. I got this um, on the Spoonflower Etsy site. And it is um, a little pricey, but hilarious. So that is the sewing I have for you in this episode. All right, just a quick news and events because this is the last podcast I'm going to do before the sweater along starts. So if you missed the last episode, the sweater along is my annual sweater knit along. It runs this year from August 9th to October 15th. So that's about 10 weeks. Um, and basically you just pick one of my 27 sweater patterns and join in. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, as I said, 27 sweater patterns are eligible. You can find a list of all of them at the link that's in the description box to the sweater along. There will be prizes. There will be challenges along the way. I have already uh, put up a schedule, which is completely optional. But if you need a little bit more support and making sure you're getting, you know, you're moving quickly enough through the pattern to get it done in time, it's there for you. Um, everybody who finishes a sweater during the sweater along, so that's finishes their pattern, um, washed, blocked, and a photo on Instagram or over on Discord, um, by October 15th, we'll get a, a brand new free sweater pattern from me. I guess that's kind of a crapshoot because you haven't seen it, but you can keep watching, um, the podcast between now and October 15th and I'll start, I'll start showing you some, some sneak peeks of that sweater. Um, it is a pullover that is knit from cuff to cuff, so, and it has some cables. That's what I can tell you for now. Um, challenges along the way are usually like post such and such photo on Instagram or, you know, something like that. Nothing, nothing too involved. And um, random people who post on Instagram will also be, I have to use the hashtag, um, but you'll also be picking people to just win occasional free patterns. I'm still working on putting together a grand prize. It will definitely involve yarn of some kind, um, probably some other good stuff as well. So August 9th, you don't have to cast on that day. Of course, you can decide to start participating anytime between now and October 15th. I mean, between August 9th and October 15th, um, but casting on on August 9th is going to give you the, the best opportunity to actually get your sweater done during the sweater along. So uh, again, links to everything down in the description box. I hope to see you there. All right, I'm going to skip Chatterbox in this episode because one, I did a really lengthy Chatterbox in the previous episode. Two, I still need to record a tutorial before it is my turn to go on kid duty again. And three, I'm about to leave for vacation in two days, so I'm a little busy. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for joining me for episode 44 of the ELO and Stitch podcast. Links to everything that I talked about can be found in the show notes at mediabetterwhatnot.com slash ELO and Stitch. Thank you so much to my Patreon patrons who help keep the podcast and the whole Media Better One and its channel up and running. If you are interested in supporting the podcast or the channel and would like to get freebies and perks and behind the scenes stuff, you can find more information at patreon.com slash Media Better One. Here on YouTube, if you can subscribe to the channel, like this episode, leave a comment, share it with your friends, all of that helps expand the reach of the channel. And we would love to have more knitters uh, over here learning uh, all they can about knitting and uh, maybe listening to me ramble about knitting too, occasionally. Uh, if you are looking for me on social media, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Media Peruana. And I will see you next time. <music>